we've got some technical issues all ironed out. So if you were here about 20 minutes ago, it all went a little bit gooey and a little bit But good morning, everyone. Um, if you joined me 20 minutes ago, you know who I am. If you're just joining now, hi, I'm Lou. Lou Crothers. I'm the food photographer, recipe developer, paste tester, all sorts of things here at Crumbs and Corkscrews. And you're joining me live this morning in my kitchen in the Cotswolds. It has stopped raining. And today we're doing Kitchen Live. Uh, we've just got a little bit of a countdown. Oops, things have changed around over here. It's counting down. Uh, and then we'll get stuck in. Fingers crossed, no technical issues. But if you're joining us for the first time, uh, Kitchen Live decided to pop up and happen during lockdown and we've been doing a couple of series of Kitchen Live every year. This is the first one this year. It's been a little bit poorly but we're all good. We're all better and all ready to go now. So this is the first time in nearly 12 months since I've done this. So fingers crossed you can hear me, you can see me, and we've ironed out those technical hitches this morning. But um, if there's anything, you can pop um, questions, comments, tell me you can't hear me, things aren't working uh, in the comments below. So whether you're joining me on Facebook or YouTube, it's great to have you here. Um, just forgive any um, nerves, hiccups that happened because I say it's been 12 months and I'm so nervous about this but hopefully hopefully today we're going to be doing a triple chocolate cheesecake and as it says let's get baking now my little thing is not working so I'm going to pop over here and we'll get started so, ooh, everything's moved around. So I've, as you can see, if you've been joining us before, things were a little bit different. We've got a new color scheme, there's new style, um, still me, uh, but the website at the moment, the blog, all the recipes are going under a complete um, rebrand that I'm doing. And I hope to launch that in the new year, which I'm really excited about but these colors and the the text and all sorts of things they're your little sneak peek into um what's coming in the new year i'm so excited to share it with you but let's get the uh, the c word out the way first and then we'll get to that so today we're going to be doing a triple chocolate cheesecake it's going to look a little bit like this this is the neapolitan one but as you can see it's got different layers there and it's got a nice chocolatey biscuit base I'm going to be making a slightly smaller one um, because if you've joined me before, you know that I uh, there's only myself and my husband Ian here, so that's quite a lot of cheesecake to make. So I make a slightly smaller one, but the recipe that you'll be seeing is for an eight-inch cheesecake. It's a no-bake cheesecake, and it will serve about 12 to 16 slices, depending on how big you like to make them. <laughs> it's quite easy, this recipe. It is totally for a beginner. There is no faff with it. We've got no water baths. We're not turning the oven on. Um, we're just going to throw stuff in a bowl and mix it all together. So I reckon this is skill level beginner. But, you know, we can notch it up a little bit if you want to. And it could be a little bit of an intermediate one. And I'm sort of defining these on the new website. Beginner being you need no fancy equipment, no fancy ingredients. Uh, intermediate is you probably need to go and grab something a little bit more special from the supermarket. So you can make this as easy or as difficult as you like. The taste here. Oh, I forgot to put my taste notes in, my pros and my cons. Well, the taste note is that we're making a triple chocolate cheesecake and it is full of chocolate. We've got dark chocolate, we've got white chocolate, we've got milk chocolate, we've got Oreos in there for a really intense cocoa hit and then we're going to cover it all in a chocolate ganache. Pros, well, it's full of chocolate and it's really easy to make. Cons, you've just really got to let and wait it sit to set in the fridge. So... Whilst you're making it, it smells amazing and you can, you know, you, you want a little bit, but you've just got to let it set. That's the thing with a no-bake cheesecake is letting it set. 
Um, so, yeah. I've got a couple of uh, messages coming through. Good morning, Amita. I hope you're all well, lovely. I need to message you. I will do. And Rachel, will this be on the website? Yes, it will be. I will be taking photos of it and putting it up later this afternoon. So it'll be live on the website in um, the next day or two. And I will post that on the Facebook page so you'll know that it's there. But you can get all the ingredients on the next screen. And I'm just going to say... We've just got a few technical hiccups this morning, so bear with in the name of Miranda. There we go. So recipe-wise and ingredients, like I say, there's nothing really fancy in here. A lot of it is just stuff you can pick up in the supermarket, and you can go as expensive or as cheap as you like. So I've sort of got a mix of ingredients today from, from, the, from the supermarket, but you could go to a budget supermarket, Aldi, Lidl, or any of those, and get cheaper uh, ingredients and still get the same amazing taste and amazing cheesecake at the end. So depending on where we all are, um, we've got those. So ingredients-wise, then, we'll have a quick rundown. Uh, we've got 300 grams of chocolate biscuits or Oreos. I'm going to use Oreos today. You could use a chocolate digestive or a chocolate cookie or a bourbon biscuit or anything like that, like a chocolate biscuit. doesn't matter if it's got cream in the center. We're going to mush that all up together. So there are your Oreos. You're also going to need a little bit of unsalted butter. Um, if you've got salted, it doesn't matter. This is gonna, we're going to melt this in with our Oreos and form our crust. So you'll need your butter. You'll also need, let's grab it out the fridge now. You can tell I haven't done one of these for a while. <laughs> You're also then going to need cream cheese. Now, it's really important this is full-fat cream cheese. So a Philadelphia, a full-fat soft cream cheese. If you're lucky and you can find block cream cheese, even better. But it needs to be full-fat uh, because it's that fat content, that thickness that's going to work with our double cream to help set our no-bake cheesecake Lower, lower fat um, or even lighter than light cream cheeses tend to have a lot of water content in them. And when you add that with the cream and you try and set it, you get a really runny, watery mixture. And that just won't set nice and firm uh, in the fridge. So full fat is best. And you can normally tell when you've got a pat of, I've got rid of mine now, but when you uh, if you're buying a pack of Philadelphia or full fats of cream cheese, when you peel back the foil on the top, you might find there's some water there. Just drain that off. But if you do have different levels of fat cream cheese, you'll notice that on those lighter ones, there's quite a lot of water in there. But So just pour it off and make sure you use full fat cream cheese. So that's that. And you want to get this out of the fridge about now about 10, 15 minutes before you get started because this then will be a lot smoother and a lot more creamier when we mix it into our cheesecake filling. You're also going to need some double cream. And again, double cream, heavy cream, whipping cream, high fat content cream, not a single cream or a lighter version because this with that cream cheese is going to get that really nice and smoothy creamy cheesecake texture. So we want that. There we go. And a little bit of icing sugar here, 50 grams of icing sugar. And this just helps with the cheese and the cream, give a little bit of sweetness into our filling. So that's that. And of course, we're doing triple chocolate. So you need some white, some milk, and some dark chocolate. And we're going to melt these and split our cream cheese filling into three different um layers and those and i've got uh 75 grams of white and milk but 200 grams of dark chocolate because i'm going to be using some of this to make a chocolate ganache to put on the top as well um but if you don't want to put chocolate ganache on you can just do 75 grams of each chocolate there great so that's all our chocolate uh, all our chocolate <laughs> chocolate on the brain this morning all our ingredients and 
uh, a little bit of vanilla extract. This is my own homemade one, um, and you can make your own as well. It's really, really easy, or you can just buy it. Okay, equipment-wise then, again, you don't need a huge amount. The only thing I recommend for cheesecakes is getting a springform pan. Now, as I said, this is a slightly smaller one. This is a seven inch. This recipe is better. Uh, the ingredients you have here is for an eight inch. I'm just making a reduced version here. And the springform pans are the ones with the clasp on the outside where the bottom falls out the bottom falls, the base falls out the bottom. <laughs> And the reason being these are better for cheesecakes is if you think of a regular cake tin uh, with maybe a loose bottom that you have to push down, sort of push the sides down to bring the cake out. If you do that with a cheesecake, it's just going to get a really nasty mess. So by having a springform pan, it means that when our cheesecake is set, we can just run a warm knife around the edge, release and this then pulls the sides away from our cheesecake and we can lift it off nice and easily. So this is a must. These are from Masterclass. I absolutely love them. They're really good quality um, if you're baking in them as well. They're nice and thick. Uh, you'll also need a little bit of baking parchment. We're going to line our cake in with that and I'll show you a little trick around that. You'll also, if we're going to be crushing biscuits or Oreos, you'll need a mini chopper or a food processor. Or if you're feeling like you need a little bit of stress relief, you can put them in a freezer bag and give them a bash <laughs> with a rolling pin. Um, I'm going to be using a hand mixer today, but you can also use a stand mixer with the balloon whisk attachment. This... Um, if you've watched before, you know that I loved my five pound Tesco value hand mixer. Unfortunately, after 12 years, it has, it's gone to hand mixer heaven. And this is a new one. This is one that I picked up on Amazon whilst it was on offer. It was more expensive. It's a Breville, um, but it's got a heat soft element in it. So if you don't have a stand mixer and you, um, use a hand mixer for making cakes and buttercreams. This is really cool because it's got this warming device um, here at the front, which will help soften your butter. We don't need that today, um, but this is the one that I've got. Really cool. And it's got um, lots of speeds on it. I'm, I'm loving that at the moment. Uh, you're also going to need some mixing bowls, a big, large one, and a couple of small ones as well. And as usual, your accoutrements, your spatulas, spoons, and my angled palette knife, the one that I tell everybody this is a must for getting a lovely level cheesecake. So that's a very quick whistle-stop tour through the ingredients and through the uh, equipment. And as we go through, I'll talk more about those as well. I'll just leave that up for a moment and move everything around. See, I will get used to doing this again. It's been 12 months. <laughs> Let's give you a little bit more of a full screen and then you can see everything that's going on a bit more easily. Excellent. And as I said, all the ingredients, the recipe and everything will be up on the website within the next day or so. So keep an eye on that and I will let you know when it's there. It absolutely chucked it down this morning here in uh, just outside of Sirencester. And when I woke up at eight o'clock, it looked like the apocalypse has come. But I've just looked outside and it's beautiful blue skies now. It's so lovely. I'm just going to put my hair back. There we go. Right then. So first up this morning, we are going to make our biscuit base. Um, with our Oreos and our butter. Now you can melt the butter in the microwave. I'm just going to do this on the hob this morning um, very, very quickly. I knew there was something I forgot to get out. So while we crush our biscuits and line our tin, we're going to pop our butter into a small pan and just gently heat it until it melts. We don't want to burn it or anything like that, just until it melts. 
You can do this in the microwave in sort of 20 second blasts on full power. Just keep an eye on it, otherwise it spits everywhere. So let's pop this on the hob. And it's on low. Whilst that's doing its thing, we're gonna take our spring form pan and our baking parchment. Now, I've said how easy these are for cheesecakes. They do have a little rim on them. It's what helps clamp everything together. And you can turn them upside down, but some tins don't work and clamp it in so you've got this raised base. Uh, with the masterclass ones, they sit with this dimple down. So what I do is I get a square of parchment. Oh, you can see the book there. A square of parchment, lay it over the top and grab my tin and just place it over and clamp it shut. And it gets this little skirt um, and you can trim that off. Just gonna move that out of the way, that's my notes. You can trim that off and probably There we are. If you are trimming off, make sure you leave a little bit of a skirt there so when you do um, release, you can easily slide that off. If you trim it too close, then you're having to juggle cheesecake pans and, and baking parchment. But this is it. So, and as you can see, we've got a nice baking parchment liner there. So let's put that to one side. And then, and next up is our biscuits, our Oreos. Let's oh, find a plug. Any plug will do. You can tell I've not done this for a while, can you? So I'm just going to use a mini chopper. You can use a food processor or whatever you feel is best. And I'm just going to break these up into here. Now, the recipe there is for 300 grams of Oreos, and that's if you want to take the crust up the side, so it's a bit more of a, a cheesecake pie. Uh, this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it to make a nice, lovely, thick base. I'm just going to take those out a moment. And when you're crushing the biscuits, um, whether you're doing it by hand or with a food processor or a mini chopper, you want to make sure that you get a really fine sandy texture. If you've got any lumps in there when you go to cut your cheesecake, if you hit one of those with a knife, it will put pressure on the rest of the base and it will just end up splitting. So a nice, excuse the noise. A nice sandy texture. Let's give it some pulses. Uh -huh. And I can hear the butter is ready, so I'm just going to give that a swirl and turn that off. That'll be fine. So we've got a sandy texture here then. And you'll notice, even though I'm doing it with Oreos, I left all that cream in. That also helps with the butter, just bind our, our base together. I'm just going to do these last couple. Oh, oh, I hope everybody's okay and uh, enjoying Sunday morning. Um, I'm sorry for the hiccups. Like I say, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> Confidence and everything will come back soon. Let's do these last biscuits. It's also why I chose to do a cheesecake today. So I thought, I know those. It's my first one back. So, just get rid of some washing up there. And unplug that because oh, we want to plug in later. 
So then we have, I'm just going to check over with a spoon, make sure we've not got any lumps. Just two lumps in there, get rid of those. So here we go, we've got a good deep dish of Oreo crumbs there. And I'm just going to make a quick well in the centre and grab my butter and pour that in the middle. I'm just going to swill that because we want to use that later. And then with just a spoon, mix it together. So you know I said we had fine sand, now we we're looking for wet sand. And you don't want it, it doesn't want to be too wet. Don't think, oh, it doesn't look like it's, it's wet enough. It is, if you think about, it's a strange analogy, but if you do think about when you were building sand castles as a kid, you didn't want the sand too wet because in the bucket it would just all fall apart when you turned it out. And you wanted it a bit damp to hold its shape. And that's what we want with our cheesecake as well. So, it's sort of like a, I just realised I'm navy and that's <laughs> that. It is uh, like a thick sandy texture. Uh, and that office telling me that we've cancelled thunderstorms. That's good. Right. So, with our lined pan and our Oreo mix... Right in. And just then with a spoon, level it, make sure you spread it evenly around that base. Make sure and give it a, a push down with the spoon as you're doing it. Don't go too hard because you will crack it round, but you want to get quite an even layer. There we go. If you're doing the, a bigger cheesecake, you could use a glass or a measuring cup or something like this to get a, a good smooth base. I've also seen people using coffee presses as well <laughs> to get that perfect base. But for this morning, we're just going to use our spoon and push down and you'll see that when you do that that nice sandy texture just like our sandcastle all goes nicely together so we've got our base uh, there is one in there it's an oreo one and we're going to pop this now in the fridge to chill for 30 minutes or, or whilst we make our cheesecake filling so this is going in the fridge and then we're on to our filling so first up what we'll do is we'll make the cheesecake filling and then we will get the chocolate on to melt as well and split that across some bowls for this, you're going to need a large mixing bowl. Again, you can do it in a stand mixer like the KitchenAid if you prefer, but using the uh, balloon whisk, the big balloon whisk attachment. And what we're going to do first is we're going to get a clean spatula. We're going to add our cheesecake filling. Now, as I said before, this has been sat out now for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I can see there's a little bit of water in the bottom there. So let's just get rid of that. That's the bit that we don't want. The water will slacken the cheesecake um, and we really don't want that. That's what will stop it from setting properly. So full fat cream cheese. There we go. In. And then we're going to add in our icing sugar. That just helps cut through the cheesiness. Gives it a little bit of sweetness there. Let's get rid of some washing up. And I'm going to use the hand mixer on this. So 
So let's just scrape down. Now, you don't want to over whip your cream cheese. We're just going to give it a little bit of a, uh, a whisk, and that will just help it uh, be a little bit more creamier. Let's pop that one there for the moment. Should have got a... I can tell I'm not very... <laughs> it's my first kitchen live for a while. All those things that I learned over several years of doing them, and I've totally forgotten them. So with our hand mixer, this is our cream cheese and our icing sugar, and I'm going to just, on low speed, whisk the two together. I love 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 this hand mixer it's just i mean i loved my tesco value one but this one it's just beats everything else and in fact i've probably been using this a bit more than the sand mixer recently So that's our cream cheese. It's not whipped. It's just softened and whisked slightly because we don't want to slacken it off too much. But as you can see, it's nice and spreadable. And then we're going to add in our double cream. So this is double cream or heavy cream, or you can use whipping cream. But again, you don't want to use single or a low fat version because it's that fat content along with the fat content in the cream cheese that brings it all together. It gives you that lovely, smooth, creamy cheesecake filling. So in there goes our double cream. Get it all out. And we're just going to add a little bit of vanilla extract, one teaspoon. And like I say, this is my homemade one. You can find the recipe, which is super easy. It's vodka and vanilla pods <laughs> on the website as well. If you want to make some uh, vanilla extract, if you're doing a, a handmade Christmas, that's a lovely thing to create. And I usually uh, make a big vat of it and then decant off from there. Uh, I'm just get the tea towel from my hands. So, in here, then we have our cream cheese and icing. Canon still haven't fixed this timeout thing. Oh, it's really frustrating. <laughs> So like I say, in here we have our cream cheese and our icing sugar mixture. I've just added in our double cream and a, uh, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now we're going to whisk this until it all becomes uh, a really thick but still spreadable, smooth and spreadable mixture. And that's that double cream whipping up along with the cream cheese. So start on low. Don't worry if it looks like it's curdling. That's just the cream cheese and the cream together. give that a scrape down so what we have it's very much like a thick cream when you whip your cream but as you can see it's nice and thick but still easily spreadable i'm not sort of having to fight it or anything i can mix it quite nicely with my rubber spatula so you don't want to take it too far, otherwise your cream will split as well. So we're just going to pop this now to one side. Let's get 
what we can off our beaters. So we're going to now add in some chocolate to this and layer it up in our cheesecake in our pan. So our crust is sat in the fridge chilling at the moment and we're going to create three layers. We're going to create a dark chocolate layer, we're going to create a milk chocolate layer and we're going to create a white chocolate layer. And so what we need to do is melt some chocolate. Now you can do this in the microwave which I'm not going to do this morning. I'm going to do it over the pan, which we just had, um, on a sort of like a double boiler. So you want to put about an inch of water in the base there. And get that going again. I say, if you can do this in the microwave if you want and do them in 30 second blasts, when you heat your chocolate, you don't want it to go too far. Otherwise, it will, it will split and it will become quite grainy. So we're going to melt these and on the hob and I'm going to try and minimize how much washing up I do by doing them in white chocolate, milk chocolate and dark chocolate order. So, and then I can basically reuse the same bowl. <laughs> So in here at first goes my 75 grams of white chocolate and whilst that's heating that can sit over the top. Now when you do this you want to make sure that you've only got a small amount of water in here. Um, you don't want the bowl to be touching the water. A bit like um, if you overheat it in the microwave and it goes grainy. If it comes into direct contact with the heat again it will cause the, uh, the, cream, uh, the, the chocolate to split as well. Now, I would like to try and get an even, um, even layers uh, across my cheesecake filling. So we are going to um, weigh out our filling. So we need a couple of bowls for this. I'm going to start off with, I uh, just quickly rinse off the bowls that we were using earlier. Apologies for hearing my washing up there. And let's get a tea towel. Now, you don't have to weigh them out exactly. You can, if you prefer, just want to eyeball it. But I want to try and get some even layers across. <laughs> so I'm going to weigh out some cheesecake filling. And remember, I'm doing a slightly smaller version than the ingredients. The ingredients there are for an, uh, for an eight inch um, cheesecake. Uh, so my, my split is going to be a little bit lower. So we only need two because we can use this bowl as well. So let's have a look, shall we? Uh, grams, there we go. So I'm just going to take a good scoop. So that's 100. I reckon it will be about 150 grams each layer. There's one. And to tear that off. There we go. I think... Eyeballing that last one, that's the right amount there compared to the others. So let's get, let's have a look at our white chocolate, which hasn't melted yet. So we're just going to give that a moment. Oh. Well, that just does its thing and melts our white chocolate. We'll, um, we'll just have a little breather. <laughs> and things. Let's get organised. 
chocolate wise, um, let's talk about that. Chocolate wise, you can use, like I say, you can grab any sort of chocolate. If uh, we're all sort of watching the pennies at the moment, so you can make this with sort of you can just pop into the supermarkets and the own brands. And in fact, I've used, and there's quite a few bars in the fridge of the Aldi, just their basics chocolate, their dark chocolate um, and white chocolate actually tend to be really good. I find the milk chocolate has a little bit of a slightly different taste that I'm, I'm not too fond of. So I do try and just use a, a regular sort of Cadbury's milk chocolate. Um, I think we're all a bit... Uh, condition to that but you can use just the basic supermarket chocolate and the same with the oreos you can use uh, digestive biscuits if you prefer or again a lot of supermarkets now do their own brand of cookies and cream and i know the budget supermarkets do as well so you can use those in fact i think i've probably got some in the cupboard but we are using oreos today um cream cheese wise you can use store-bought like I say, you want to make sure it is full fat. When you peel that foil back uh, to open the packet, see how much water is there on the top. If there's quite a lot of water, it may be a bit iffy, but pour that water off first, but make sure it is full fat cream cheese and also on your double cream because it is that full fatness, that fat that brings everything together and gives us that really smooth and creamy taste. I can see this is... Uh, going there so can I reuse a spatula rather than getting another one out let's rinse that one off I always have a bowl of hot water next to me when I'm baking there we go so this is started to melt. It won't be too long. Don't take it until it's completely melted, either if you're doing melting chocolate in the microwave or on the hob on a double boiler. That, um, uh, the, the residual heat will melt any um, lumps that, are, that you think, oh, I need to keep taking that a bit further. So this is nearly there. Da, da, da. If you're doing this with children, the microwave is the safer option um, for little people to get involved with. I'm just going to get some oven gloves. Remember, this will be hot, and this bowl on top is a Pyrex dish, so it is heat proof. I'm just going to leave the saucepan there, ready for the next. i just bring this over. So I still got a little bit of a lump in there, but that's fine. Because that heat there, as you can see, has... Um, melted that down i am just going to so we can move on with the next chocolate melting just going to pour this white chocolate into the dish that i had it in first and the reason being is i want it to cool just a little bit before i add it in to the cream and cheesecake filling mixture i don't want that to be straight hot into the There we go. And I've scraped out most of the chocolate so we can reuse the bowl. And this time we're going in with our milk chocolate. Put white chocolate on my fingers. And again, onto the top there. The bowl's warm and the water's warm now. So that will be, um, I've got white chocolate everywhere. That will help that melt. So, temperature test. I'm going to add this in to our mixture. 
temperature test, when you put your finger, a clean finger in, uh, it should feel sort of no difference between the two. If you think about when you test a baby's bottle, milk, um, you want that thing. So get the chocolate in and mix it in really well straight away because we don't want it to um, cause any issues. Now, I'm going to layer mine up in reverse. So we've got that Oreo base white chocolate, milk chocolate in the middle, and dark chocolate on the top, which will then have that dark chocolate ganache on. So whilst our chocolate is melting, just make sure that's not boiling too much, we've got our cream, our white chocolate filling ready to go. We've got white chocolate everywhere. <laughs> Let's get rid of that one. Let's get our base, which has been chilling in the fridge, out. So ideally you want to leave this for about 30 minutes, but you know, it's fine as it is. So in our base, excuse me, I'm going to get our white chocolate cream cheese. Wow. Cheesecake filling. Lots of bowls today. <laughs> I do try and have recipes that aren't too heavy on bowls, but sometimes you just can't help it. So we have in here then our cheesecake filling and our, uh, our base. Just gonna get, if I don't have another spoon, another spoon. And use a spoon just again, like we did with the base, just to get it all nice and level out across. And then with our trusty angled spatula in just to, to give it a good level. You can also, if you find this awkward, get a spoon. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but you can get a spoon and bend the spoon so the bowl and the handle are at uh, right angles to each other. Um, and that can help you as well um, get that leveled off. But I use an angle palette knife for loads of things, not just cheesecakes, leveling cakes, uh, icing cupcakes, all sorts of things, spreading cream and things in roulade. Right. So I've got a bowl of things there. This is now going back in the fridge to chill whilst we get the next layer ready. Let's have a look at our chocolate. Aha. Uh -huh. Turn that down. This chocolate now is pretty much there. If we've got a little bit of white chocolate left in there, it's fine. It's not going to uh, cause an imbalance or anything. That's why I'm doing it in this order. So we can also use only one bowl. <laughs> so that wasn't quite melted when I took it off the heat, but that residual heat there has just melted the last of the chocolate. And that's going to go into this bowl. And I'm just going to get a plate for my dirties there. And we're just going to pour that chocolate, just like I did with the white chocolate. You don't have to do this. It's only because I'm using one bowl uh, into the bowl it came out of. So it can cool down a little bit. This is the problem with being a lefty. Sometimes things aren't necessarily very um, awkward I say you can do this in the microwave as well 
30 second blasts to a point where it's almost um, melted and then take it out. So then our last chocolate is our dark chocolate. We'll pop that in there. So the ingredients for this is 200 grams of chocolate in, to in total. We're only using 75 grams for our cheesecake filling. The rest is for the ganache. I'm just going to pop that on there and let that do its thing. And then we have our bowl for our chocolate filling. So finger in. should be warm, not too cold, because if it's too cold when it hits the, the cream cheese, it will seize. But it wants to not be hot, hot, so it doesn't cook when we pop it in. So that's just transferring it to another bowl really helps. So, uh, yeah. There we go. And then again with our spoon, we're doing this in the order so we can reuse. <laughs> if we can minimize washing up, always the better. And give this a good stir, and you'll get that light chocolate mix. Just give, make sure we've got it all incorporated there. You can use cocoa powder if you don't want to use chocolate. You just um, half, like sort of stay, start with about um, 10, 12 grams of cocoa powder for the dark chocolate layer, um, half that for the this milk chocolate lighter layer, and then obviously leave it out for the, the, the white layer. But I quite like... And prefer to use different chocolates for this. So you get it is a true triple chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> Let's scrape off. Ian is looking forward to this because having not done Kitchen Live for a long time, he hasn't had lots of desserts. <laughs> so uh, he's. Um, He's really looking forward to this. Oh, thank you, Louise. Great to have you back. It's good to be back. I mean, I'm all over the shop, but it's good to be back. Um, so this is our milk chocolate layer then. So let's grab our white chocolate layer out of the fridge. This has just been chilling for a little while. You could pop it into the freezer if you wanted to. But actually, just having that chilled set is fine. We're not going to be pushing down and merging the two in. You want to go quite gently with this. So let's put our chocolate layer. Oh, it smells amazing. It's so light and wit and airy, this cheesecake filling. I love a no-baked cheesecake. We were in Barcelona last weekend for birthdays and wedding anniversaries and just pure eating. It was the first time we've been away since COVID. And I'd really wanted to get burnt cheesecake and I totally forgot. <laughs> no. So we're just going to take use our other spoon and just level that across. There. Make sure we get a nice even layer. I mean, if you wanted to go even more extravagant, you could add some chocolate chips into these layers as well. But I think, I think that's quite, we're going to add some chocolate ganache to the top. Right. Just going to, there we go. 
The only problem is with working with chocolates, it gets so messy. Or it might, that might just be me. Let's have a look at our final chocolate then. Let's pop, tell you what, let's pop this back in the fridge first and look at our final chocolate layer. Let's make sure our camera doesn't do anything daft. Oh, you've got a little bit of something on there. No, you don't want all of that. Uh, has that cleared it? That's cleared it. Press the wrong button. See, it's been a while. <laughs> and then our last chocolate that is melting, which actually is spot on timing. So we can turn that off. Carefully take that off because that's hot water there. And this is our dark chocolate layer then. I could just leave this in here to cool down as um, it is the last bowl but I want it to cool down a little bit quicker. So I am going to transfer it into the bowl that we, um, I'd weighed it out into, just a bit like we've done for the others. So it's uh, quick and easy. I am going to be doing now, fingers crossed, and I haven't made a total hash of it, Kitchen Lies Through to Christmas. Uh, so if anyone has any thoughts or ideas that you want to do, I have got a list of stuff um, so that I'm hopefully going to be doing. Um, and I will be posting that out uh, soon. And we will have the, the bonus uh, Christmas bonus Wednesdays as well. Wednesday evening, sort of quick 30-minute lives. Just going to move that over there. It's a bit too hot yet to go in the sink. Um, which we'll be doing, yeah, we'll be doing those and um, we've got, I've got a few things for gift ideas. We'll be doing some Christmas shortbread. I know it feels strange talking about Christmas already, but it's not that far away. We're doing some Christmas shortbread, some homemade Baileys um, and some just really quick and easy Christmas gift ideas on the Wednesday. And then, obviously, our Christmas recipes on the other days. So this is, let's give it a scrape down, our last cheesecake layer then. And that's dark chocolate. Oh. Immense. The urge to just put the spoon in my mouth that's covered in chocolate, it's just a bit crazy. So, I'm just going to fair bit of washing up to do, but mix it through. And you'll see this time now, this is a darker uh, chocolate colour than the milk chocolate layer. If you want to make it if you want to have that really striking dark layer, don't add more chocolate in because that'll make it runny and, and, and not so thick. Um, just add a pinch of cocoa powder or um, if you've got it, and I've used it before and I've, I've used it quite a lot um, on Kitchen Lives and on websites, is um, intense cocoa powder, um, like sometimes called black cocoa powder. It sort of gives you that Oreo taste. If you've watched Bake Off, Last week, I think Dawn used it in one of her recipes, uh, but that will give you a really intense, dark, almost black chocolate uh, look and feel. So this is our last chocolate layer. And we're going to pop that onto our milk chocolate. And then just... Over. I can't, actually can't wait to get into this now. 
because it it does smell all things chocolate. <laughs> Oop. Pop that there for a minute. Get as much out as possible. Without getting it all over you. And there we go. Like I say, make sure it's well spread. Don't be too hasty when spreading because those layers aren't completely set yet. You can pop it in the freezer if you want to to help set them quicker. Um, Or you can just be a little bit careful, a bit like me. Or set them in the fridge for a little bit longer, like half an hour between each. But it means you, you're waiting around a bit. So I just need to get some into a little bit of a corner there. Well, it's not a corner, is it? Because it's a round tin. So, and let's scrape that off. So, this is our cheesecake layered up, our triple chocolate layered cheesecake. I am just gonna go over finish off with the angled palette knife so this now is going in the fridge for at least four hours if you are desperate to get into it if you can wait six even better if you can leave it overnight, that's absolutely perfect because it will give you the best set. But that's now going in the fridge. In it goes. And that, apart from all the mess, is our triple chocolate cheesecake. Now, what I will be doing is I will be making a chocolate ganache to go on the top. And then I'm thinking I might do a big fluffy cloud of cream or marshmallow on the top which will torch with the kitchen torch i haven't decided yet the um the chocolate ganache we could actually do very very quickly maybe let's just wash that up Rinse that one off because it's only had water in it. So the easiest way for your chocolate ganache is two ingredients. And we're going to have to measure the cream because I hadn't measured it out. But two ingredients. So we're going to be using some double heavy cream and some dark chocolate. And all we're going to do is, is equal quantities of chocolate to cream and I have here this is Monio which is beautiful chocolate um it's expensive but it's beautiful in cakes and desserts if you if you want to push the boat out a little bit um this is 100 grams so we want 100 grams of that to 100 grams of cream and you'll note that I'm weighing my cream rather than volume there and all we're going to do is pop this now onto heat. Do this on a hob. Don't heat your, micro your cream in the microwave because um, it's, uh, it's not great. I'm just going to rinse off a bowl. Notification from the Amazon man. 
And instead of heating the chocolate like we did uh, for the cheesecake filling and melting that and mixing it in, we're going to heat the cream and pour it over the chocolate. So it's the cream that melts the chocolate there. And it is the simplest thing in the world. You can add a little bit of butter, just a tiny little bit of butter if you want to, um, or a little bit of sugar. But if you just want to be really quick and easy, chocolate and cream. So this I know is 100 grams because it's what it says on the packet. I'm just going to break that into pieces. And what we'll need to do is this will need to then set, uh, start to chill down before we pour it over the top. Um, and you can keep this in the fridge um, as well if you don't use all of it. And bring it up to room temperature and give it a whisk before we do it. So let's just have a look at what our cream is doing. There's a bowl full of washing up. I'm just looking for another spatula and thinking, we're going to have to just get another one. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, we haven't been to Ikea for a while, but when I do go, I'll be getting some more of these. These spatulas from Ikea, I think they're like 99p, but they're the best thing ever. And we've got at least six of them and they do get really well used. <laughs> So our cream is heating up. I can see it bubbling on the edge, but I do want it to be warm. So I need to bring it up a little bit more because it's that heat that's going to melt our chocolate, uh, which will be in a moment. And then what we'll do is we'll have a quick run through of the ingredients again and the recipe just very, very quickly. And then I'm going to leave you guys to your Sunday morning. <laughs> I hope it's been all right. I'm just I'm still trying to get my head around back, back here, to be quite honest. Right. I can see my cream is just bubbling away at the edges. And we don't want to take it too far because then you'll create, it'll burn or you'll get a skin form. So I can see that has bubbling away at the edges don't need to worry about cooling it just pour straight over the top let it sit for a moment don't don't be tempted to go in and stir straight away just let it sit thing so we'll let that sit and i'll give it a stir whilst I just give you a quick recap. Um, need to get my touch thing sorted again because that's so handy. So today we have made a triple chocolate cheesecake. Uh, the recipe is for an eight inch spring form pan. I've made a slightly smaller one just because it's a bit too much for two of us to eat, um, which will serve about 12 to 16 slices. It is a really easy beginner recipe. Um, you, if you, you know, I, I say it maybe is intermediate just because there's a few things of um, picking through the, the different layers there and, and bits and pieces. But actually, you've seen me do it and we've done it in an hour, less than an hour, in fact, um, as we go through. Pros and cons and taste notes. I totally forgot to put them onto the recipe card here. Taste, I mean, it's got three layers of chocolate in and it's got more chocolate on the top. So it is a total chocolate heaven. And that is also your pro. Your con is maybe waiting for it to set. I mean, I don't, uh, unless you don't like chocolate, <laughs> I can't see anything wrong with it. It's also a great um, dessert that you can make the night before and leave in the fridge. So if you've got lots of things going on. Uh, just quickly, you'll have seen me stirring that then. So I've stirred the, the cream and the chocolate. That's all melted. And it's a nice, thick texture, but it's too warm to put onto our cheesecake. And our cheesecake needs set. So that will go to the side then now. Um, I've got another 
dirty bowl, dirty bowls everywhere today. <laughs> Uh, final run through of ingredients. I promise next week we'll be a bit slicker again. We'll get back up to speed. It'll be fantastic. Um, ingredients wise then. So this is for an eight inch triple chocolate cheesecake. You'll use about 300 grams of Oreos. You can reduce that to 250 if you just want to do the base. 300 grams will give you a really lovely thick base or you could bring it up the sides of the tin. Um, You've got 75 grams of unsalted butter. We melt that to add into the crushed Oreos or the crushed chocolate biscuits um, to make that really lovely buttery biscuit base that we have with a cheesecake. Um, for the cheesecake filling then, you'll need a full fat cream cheese, 500 grams of that. Remember, it has to be full fat. It's that water content. If it's light or the lightest, It'll be really slack and it'll have a lot of water in there and the cheesecake filling won't set. You're also going to pair that then with, um, this is 300 grams of double cream for the cheesecake filling and 100 grams of cream for the ganache. Um, but that, uh, again, you want double or heavy or whipping cream, uh, whatever you call it in your country. And... Stay away from any of the low-fat options or any of the single creams. I haven't tried this with any of the plant-based creams. Um, so if anybody wants to give it a go, you want to make sure that you've got the double cream alternative, the thick creams there. I think coconut cream would work, but obviously it's going to give you a taste into your chocolate. Although that could be a bit like a bounty bar, maybe. <laughs> a little bit of icing sugar, 50 grams of icing sugar, and we add that in with the cream cheese. It just cuts through that cheese and gives a little bit of sweetness. And then your three chocolates, 75 grams of white chocolate, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate for your filling. Um, and then um, 100 grams of chocolate for your ganache. So that should be 175 grams of chocolate, sorry. Um, for equipment-wise, then, you want that springform pan. That's the one with the little clasp on the side so you can open it and the base falls out. So much easier for dealing with your cheesecakes. Um, gives you that nice edge. You're not having to faff around and push anything out. A little bit of baking parchment to line it. Again, helps it helps you get your cheesecake out. Makes life so much easier. Don't be making baking and desserts difficult for yourself. <laughs> a mini chopper or food processor for crush, crushing our chocolate biscuits or our Oreos. Or stress relief with a freeze bag and a rolling pin. And then a hand mixer is what we use today. Or you can use a stand mixer like a KitchenAid or a Kenwood. If you're doing that, make sure you're using the balloon whisk. And... And then uh, a mini uh, and a variety of mixing bowls. As you see, I used a large one for mixing my cream cheese in, uh, my cheesecake filling, and some smaller bowls then for mixing my Oreo base in and my chocolate cream uh, cheesecake fillings. And the usual accoutrement, small uh, rubber spatulas, angle palette knives, as many spoons and everything as you can get. <laughs> but that's a quick run down there of the ingredients you'll need. Let's pop over. Everything will be up and running. Ah, I've moved everything around, you see. It's all very confusing. Everything will be up and running on the website. Uh, we'll get these photographed today and the recipe written up. So it'll be on the website at the beginning of the week. Um, I will let you know on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel when that all goes live. But you've got everything you need here to make this as well. Um, like I say, the website is going under a revamp. You'll see it in its current state if you go at the moment. But in the new year, all this new colors and the new brand and all bits and pieces all coming together. And there's little sneak peeks coming through on the Facebook page as well, which I'm really excited about. But as always... Oh, thank you, Rachel. I, it smells amazing. I actually cannot wait to get in and try it later on. Um, and it's always difficult when you're cutting through it and I've got to take pictures and all I want to do is eat it. But what I am thinking is I'm going to use this chocolate ganache, layer that over the top. Um, and once I've taken it out of the tin, I'll pull the chocolate ganache over so you almost get that drip effect down the side. And then 
I don't know if I'm going to put a big mound of lots of fluffy double cream on the top or some meringue, which I'll torch with the blowtorch. Um, I haven't decided yet, so that's why we've not done that bit. But I will let you know. I'll post a sneaky peek when it's all done. But as always, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Thank you for sticking with me on my first Kitchen Live in 12 months. Um, thank you for keeping through any technical hiccups. Um, thank you for sharing your Sunday morning with me. I hope you're still in your pyjamas enjoying a cup of coffee. Um, that's where I'm going. Not necessarily the pyjamas, but the coffee is where I'm going to next. Next week, we are going to be doing something Halloween-y. I am thinking about Halloween cupcakes. I'm trying... A also baked donut recipe, um, which is what I wanted to do for Halloween. But I'm having a few technical issues with my dough, and I think it's because my yeast is dead. Um, so I've had two batches of donut dough fail at the moment. Uh, but I'll give it another try. So it might be Halloween cupcakes, at which point we've got all the sprinkles and everything out. Um, or it could be some... Halloween do baked donuts, which I'm really excited to try. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me. And I hope the rain has gone and the sun is out wherever you are, just like it is here. And I will see you all again next week. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.